Hello and welcome to another video. This morning I am at New York's LaGuardia Airport in Terminal D and I'm heading to Dallas Fort Worth flying with Delta Airlines in first class aboard one of their brand new Airbus A220s. It's a fantastic aircraft and I can't wait to show it to you. Today my journey starting at LaGuardia Airport which is and will be for the next few years a building site. I'm flying domestic first class today, which gets me sky priority check-in and also a priority fast track lane at security. Both of these were really useful and saved me about 10 minutes in the journey to get airside. LaGuardia might be the most hated airport in the United States, but it's in the middle of an $8 billion refurbishment made possible by a public-private partnership, which is quite unusual in the US. Eventually, the entire airport will be demolished and rebuilt. This terminal hasn't been demolished yet, but is already benefiting from some much nicer public spaces. There's a Delta Sky Club here too, although today I don't qualify for access. LaGuardia is an important airport for Delta, and they're heavily invested in its reconstruction. Most of the flights here are actually operated by Delta's subsidiary, Delta Connection, and the number of regional jets here is enormous. And that's really where the Airbus A220 comes in. Regional jets will typically seat between about 50 and 100 passengers, but their range is limited because they're quite small. There's always been something of a gap between traditional regional jets like this and a proper mainline airliner like this Airbus A321. Delta do have 91 Boeing 717 aircraft. These have 100 seats, but are not the most fuel-efficient aircraft on the market. Enter the Airbus A220, and here's our example arriving inbound from Houston. I've flown the A220 with a few airlines now, but this was my first trip on Delta Airlines example, and the first one that I'd be traveling that had a first class cabin. In my opinion, the Airbus A220 is the best small airliner on the market for passenger experience right now. And somewhat unusually for a new aircraft, it's absolutely beautiful. I think this is a classic design which will last the test of time. Because I was traveling first class today, I was able to use the first boarding group, which is available for first class customers and certain Delta frequent flyers. Boarding groups in the US are policed very strictly in my experience, but it doesn't stop people from queuing up a long time before the flight for some particular reason. A quick reminder that all of my video trip reports are now available in written format at Simple Flying, where I give a few more opinions about each flight that I take. First class on the A220 is laid out in a 2-2 configuration, similar to most other Delta mainline jets. Economy is laid out in a 3-2 configuration, similar to the Boeing 717. However, the cabin ambience on the A220 simply cannot be beat. The overhead bins on this aircraft are enormous and are in response to the trend for people to carry on more cabin baggage. By having more baggage space per passenger, I hope that fewer people will have to check their bags if they're last onto the aircraft. This saves both heartache and time. One thing I was expecting to find in these seats, but didn't, was a little pull-out tray for your drinks. This, however, could be the only complaint you would have with this aircraft. The first class seats are comfortable and beautifully upholstered. And the biggest reason that the cabin ambience is so much better on this aircraft are these enormous picture windows. These windows are certainly a lot bigger than you'll find on any 737 or A320 series aircraft. Thank you. We have a way shortly, three hours and 12 minutes in round weather in Dallas. Uh, it's uh, forecasting nice today, scattered clouds, temperature. A little bit warm for late September, or the temperatures in the mid 90s. Glad to have you with us.
in about five minutes or so. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff, please. Takeoff was fast and quiet, and we were soon heading over New York and then southwest towards Dallas. It's 1,388 miles to travel, and it'll take us just over three hours. As we'll find out later, this is barely even stretching the A220. The first class seat that Delta have chosen for this aircraft is manufactured by Rockwell Collins. All of the seat features are extremely sturdy, but you would expect this because this is a brand new aircraft. There's in-flight entertainment available in both classes on this aircraft, and not just in first. There's a USB jack just below the screen, and importantly the screen also tilts, which means if the person in front reclines, it doesn't affect your enjoyment of the content. And talking of content, there's a lot of it. And all of the American legacy carriers have the same trend. The in-flight entertainment selections are generally pretty good. It's a relief to find on this aircraft that the touchscreen is extremely responsive and required barely any pressure to operate. There's also some live streaming TV available. Wi-Fi was also available, powered by GoGo, -Go, but I'm afraid I wasn't able to access it for the duration of the flight. I later found out that it was a problem with my phone settings. On the day that I took this trip, there was a lot of poor weather around the United States. We were actually limited to 28,000 feet for nearly half the journey, and that was because higher up was an awful lot of turbulence. Fortunately, while there was occasional turbulence, this didn't stop the cabin crew from performing the in-flight service. Delta now offer most first-class customers the option to pre-order their main course a few days before travel through an email they'll send to the customer. I pre-ordered this beef and mustard sandwich on rye bread, which I thought was an interesting choice. I've never had it before, but I probably would order it again. It was delicious despite appearances. After lunch, it was time to recline my seat and get a little bit of rest prior to arrival in Dallas-Fort Worth. I managed to nap for about an hour and woke up with about 30 minutes to run until landing. We were already crossing the Mississippi River, and it was just time for me to have a look at some of the technical specifications of Delta's A220, which are available on the in-flight entertainment system. This aircraft is extraordinarily versatile. Not only can it operate into very small airports like London City with a steep approach, it also has a tremendous range of over 2,900 nautical miles. From LaGuardia, this aircraft of just 109 seats could easily reach South America. And for the Anglo-centrics amongst us, here's the range from London. The far east of Canada, the northern tip of the Gulf and parts of West Africa are well within reach. Unlike the 737 MAX, the Airbus A220 doesn't compromise on lavatory space. This is a more than acceptable bathroom. And by the way, the one in economy class features a window. My relationship with Delta Airlines didn't get off to a great start this year with a very substandard performance in Delta One, but this was an excellent flight. The food was good, the flight was on time, the cabin crew were personable and friendly, and I was flying on the best narrow-body aircraft anywhere in the world at the moment. As many of you will know, this aircraft actually started off life as the Bombardier C-Series, and I'm very glad that Delta ordered these aircraft and became the first American carrier to operate this, despite the sticky political situation at the time. This is, without doubt, the best narrow-body aircraft you can fly on anywhere in the world. I'm a stickler for nostalgia, and part of me loves Delta's aging fleet, but they have to be replaced sometime, and I'm glad they're using the Airbus A220. I hope you've enjoyed the video. 
Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content just like this, but I'll see you again in a few days with another video.